Now I would like to request our director, sir, to kindly give the opening remarks. Over to you, sir. I'm here. Sir, your microphone is mute. Okay, finally, good morning all of you. It's a great pleasure and honor for us to have Professor Escape Dhamachari, who is one of the great leaders the CSIR has produced. And Professor Brahmachari is known for bringing so many firsts in CSIR. And uh, what I like in Professor Brahmachari is the way he grooms the young scientists. The vigor with which he speaks to the topmost scientists or a director of an institute or a BSc student is very same and his enthusiasm and positive energy is very infectious and I am one of the persons who got very much motivated and molded by him during my formative years when I came to CSIR. Thank you very much sir and uh, I strongly believe that all of you will be greatly motivated by the talk and interactions with Professor Brahmachari. And he is the person who is trying to look at impossibles and making them possible. And because of him, we are able to have the Academy of CSIR, which is a great strength to bring in the academic zeal in the CSIR system and he has pioneered the effort, uh, efforts of a large number of young people to come together in drug discovery and yesterday we had a drug discovery hackathon which is uh, launched by the Honorable Minister of HRDG and the Science and Technology Minister at the behest of this is an idea of the Prime Minister and the roots of that was laid by Professor Brahmachari even 15 years before. And I am really delighted that when Sir has agreed to give this talk, we are all very, very lucky to have him. And he is probably one of the most appropriate persons to talk to young people. And today he will be going to talk about the power of imagination. Actually, the famous statement of Einstein that imagination is more important than knowledge. We have to imagine and we have to dream and this has a completely different context in the WhatsApp, Facebook and other era and I am sure that today's interaction will be very beneficial to all of you and he doesn't need any introduction, introduction for, for a CSIR fraternity but uh, this is uh, a platform wherein we already see 800 people have logged in in MS Teams and very soon this will be a big number and then in addition to that equal number of people will be logging in uh, in Facebook and uh, YouTube and uh, this will also be available for people to watch later. Sir, from all the CSIR fraternity and CSIR NIST. And I think you will be delighted to learn that all of this is possible because about 60, 70 young people are behind this effort in CSIR NIST. When we have 16,000 applications, they say that, yes, we will provide whatever that we can provide to them with the help of uh, people like Dr. Alok Dhawan, Dr. Mutkavi and ACSIR and definitely the strong support of our director general and all other CSIR lab directors. We are able to take it forward. And with this, I request Dr. Mutkavi to introduce Professor Brahmachari. 
thank you dr shastri dr shastri thank you very much and it is my great pleasure to introduce uh, professor brahmachari uh, not an easy job i can go on for an hour by myself but no in but people will be wanting to listen to him and therefore what i will do is just get over with a very few formal remarks and then you my personal remarks about what i have known him as over a year so professor brahmachari started his career uh, as a bsc in chemistry and msc uh, but i know that you know he was very much you know uh, inclined towards mathematics in fact i remember him stating that is far better in mathematics than any other subject uh, and that is very difficult you know to do so when you come from you know west bengal region i think you are competing with the best of the best so then from then he went on to do his phd in uh, indian social science uh, and then later on he was appointed as a director of center for biochemical technology not many people knew about the center and one of the important things he did was completely transform that institution uh, and in fact you know his vision of that uh, new institution is physical terms when you go to the campus uh, and also in the non physical terms when you meet the people there uh, he got the best of the talent there and then you know, like the the complete transformation believing in you know uh, computing as one of the key instrument for discovery Uh, that i think he still continues to believe in and we have seen that from very close quarters when he transformed that institution in fact he was responsible for setting up one of the uh, india's fastest uh, supercomputer there uh, and later on of course he also was responsible for setting up uh, another supercomputer uh, which is uh, in csir that i will uh, talk about a little later uh, i will again not you know like uh, touch upon his other achievements you can always see them on the uh you know go if you google him you know you'll know everything about him and this is the google facebook and you know whatsapp era uh about which he's going to talk about uh but when he took over the dg of csir back in 2006 uh, i had spent only about you know 14 years in uh, csir in fact none of us actually knew about csir every lab was completely independent and uh, that is something that you know professor gumachari felt is not the right thing he felt there is a csir as one entity should come together and work together and that was a new wave he started he started what we call as one csir uh towards that he has taken many many steps in fact you know from simple things like ensuring that a csir name is attached to the institutions to enabling the youngsters i remember that because one of the major program he started was a leadership development program uh, professor brahmachari today because of that effort i know every, at least one or two people in every lab in csir which was even unheard of because in, in our earlier early careers and that has brought csir together and you know like the those efforts are beginning to pay uh, today it takes time obviously for a institution large organization like csir to transform itself but a transformation in my opinion started happening when it took over as a dg of csir and in fact uh he has an enormous memory uh, which i think many people don't know he can tell you you know how many times he has visited each lab <laughs> he can give you complete statistics and during the leadership program you know, he will also tell you which organization is doing better in terms of you know the pay packages what they earn how you are placed in csir so this enormous memory he has you know all the statistics is sitting in his head and probably a lot of computing going on there also uh, and uh, and the other thing he started of course was the academy which of course is very close to his heart academy of scientific and innovation to research uh, acsir uh, i do remember it was a hard fought battle for him to get the acsir bill passed in in the parliament and, and i think i i do know that he took enormous you know effort it took enormous effort personal effort from him to be able to go and convince the parliament that that bill needs to be passed and today of course the csir has been you know one of the main functional body which work along with csir bringing a lot of youngsters in connect with the csir scientists uh, with, with which of course you know a lot of discoveries do happen i remember that also and uh, the other thing of course you know the dr shastri mentioned about the open source drug discovery uh, that that another major major uh, initiative so he was a believer in open source he was a believer in collaboration 
and he is a believer in like the technology uh, and he is a very strong believer in the applications of data science ai and machine learning and whenever i have spent some time with him he has spoken so passionately about you know healthcare affordable healthcare i think that is something is very close to his heart and he has tried every every uh, everything in the, in in the book to be able to provide solutions uh, healthcare solutions i also remember one of the uh, programs he started was what for csi 800 and what that csi 800 meant was the technology for 800 million people can't afford so he looked at the society from a very different perspective he looked at india from a very different perspective and he understood what csi can do and that is in fact there so many technologies embedded in that csi rate and that program even today i think in it some people revisit them uh, it's it's uh, it's an eye opener what csir can do to the society and that is something that uh, uh, he brought to uh, csir uh, these are just a few initiatives but the other thing is if you want new idea all that i would suggest to the youngsters is just spend 5 minutes with him that's enough uh, you get a whole lot of every minute will give you one idea uh, and then you, it, it's your job to record them and note down you know those ideas is full of ideas uh, no matter which area you come from and you know like you, you just speaking to him about 5 minutes is good enough uh, in fact we had an occasion where you know like we talked about something and then he not only gave the idea he also said this is a budget you will need this is people you will need and this is what you can do so in 5 minutes you know it's almost like laying down the whole project for 5 years okay so that that is something that you know uh, is commendable and amazing and that is something that you know uh, people will miss if they don't interact with him and uh, today of course people are going to only hear him uh, but i would urge you know like to shastri to connect many of those students to him so that you know there will be many more ideas that will you know come from him and then you know take shape uh, personally uh, one more uh, effort that he started in csir was to start the institute called fourth paradigm institute once again he saw way ahead back in 2013 in fact not even 2013 i would say probably the initiation of the all that started when he took over the director general itself back in 2006 he started dreaming about you know applications of data science ai those days ai was not known, well known we didn't speak about artificial intelligence we used to speak about you know data science okay and but he had already seen way ahead of that one again made tremendous effort to set up a institute dedicated to ai and machine learning called the fourth paradigm institute and i remember uh, one picture he had is the first institute in the world to go by that name uh, there is a globe on, on which there is one dot in bangalore which said csir fourth paradigm institute so that is the kind of you know personality we are now dealing with and obviously very conversant with the what is happening today uh and a very appropriate topic very interesting topic that is going to talk about uh, you know the power of imagination and knowledge in the whatsapp and facebook era I, i think it's very appropriate also for any because that is the tool that uh, in the hands of everybody uh, we look forward to your uh, talk professor ramachari it has been my pleasure introducing you thank you very much for accepting our invitation and spending this time I invite you to give your lecture on power of imagination and knowledge in the WhatsApp and Facebook era. Thank you very much. Thank you Dr. Narohari Shastri for organizing this mega event uh, across the country using CSIR uh, platform. And it is very nice to see that this is initiated at the farthest corner of the northeast. of india and thank you dr putkavi for giving this you know i think excessive introduction for me i'm very overwhelmed but that has come from the southest southest corner of india uh, from bangalore so you can see we have connected technically from himalaya to all the way to kanyakumari ka to this i do understand that this program is for young people who are aspirant to make a great career in science technology engineering and medicine 
all of us are living through a very uh, different world now. You are separated from your friends, your peers, your colleges, universities are closed. So one wonders, how is it that during this time, why am I saying the power of imagination of knowledge in WhatsApp and Facebook era? The reason I say this, because most of you, of course, not Dr. Mutgavi of Narwani Shastri, but most of you young people were born in the beginning of this millennium, around 2000. Just, and you are all frustrated at this moment, thinking, when will this lockdown go over? When will Corona vanish? And what do I do during this time? When I was asked to give this lecture, I, I was very surprised and I was a little excited when I was told a few thousand students will join because a couple of years back when Dr. Abdul Kalam was alive, one day he called me, you know, about a few months before his uh, passing away. That Shamiji, I give address lectures to young people, 50,000 a year, 50,000 students a year. I want you to give for 20,000 students a year. I told sir, it is impossible. I can, I agreed, bargained and said only 10,000. So last year, every last since then, I think 2017, 18, 19, 20, 19, I have been given, giving lectures and counting about 10,000 students. But this time, I was very worried that it was, it was, how do I achieve this target? I don't want his host to come to me and say, hey, Shamit, you did not give the lecture this year. So thank you, Narohari Shastri, for giving this opportunity to address a large number of students so that I can fulfill my promise, uh, late Dr. Abdul Kalamji. Imagine if you were born exactly 100 years back in 1900, what you would have experienced. In 1900, you were born in the first decades, great physics was happening. All sorts of atomic theories were getting discovered and then suddenly came at your age of 18, 19 years age, a Spanish flu, which killed millions of people. So if you are born in Europe, America, you would have then faced before that the First World War. Imagine at the age of 14 to 18, you are in the First World War. 18, 19, you are going through Spanish flu. And by the time you are 20, 39, you have the Second World War, which spanned for six years. So how lucky you are that you are in a world at this moment that you have only coronavirus, which is pandemic is affecting you and still in India, uh, much, much less number of people are uh, losing their life than compared to any other part of the world. Thanks to all the efforts of the medical fraternity, and the policies of the government. So therefore, it is, one has to understand what in that context. Now, what did happen during the first half of the 1900, 20th century? Extraordinary innovation took place. This extraordinary innovation happened if you go back and read the books written by Francis Crick, you will see he was designing mines while he was doing his PhD. He was taken out to do design mines that can differentiate between an uh, enemy ship and a, the ship that is sailing back to the place. So from there, you, don't, you come out and eventually make double helix discovery. The interesting part of it is that 
these adversities have created extraordinary innovations, whether it is Hebert process in chemistry in Germany, whether the rocket technology, whether you think of new chemistry, whole chemical industry, the ability to develop aircraft, although it was discovered in 1902 by Wright brothers, but major development of jumbo jets and flying machines and all this happened during this extraordinary difficult time. The extraordinary difficult time actually creates human to do extraordinary new things. As in the month of February, I think we became conscious that there is something called coronavirus is coming. And I studied, and you know, I can tell you, I have been studying for last 120 days more on coronavirus and virus than I've ever studied. I realized that I have become a virologist now, more or less. So what did happen? This is one side is the scenario. Second is, all of you are young and you want to be aspired success in life. And you want to be successful as a science, technology, engineering, medicine student. You want to build the career. If I would have seen all of you and asked you to raise your hand, you would have said and asked how many of you want to become wealthy. I'm sure 99% hand would have gone up. If I ask you how many of you want to be famous, maybe 40-50% hand will go up. And if I ask you how many want to be famous but poor, suddenly I will see all those hands have come down. But if I ask you who is the scientist in India and the person in India you admire most, then all of you would have shouted and told me Dr. APJ Abdul Kalam, who had very little position. When he came out of the Rashtrapati Bhavan, he had only one suitcase of position to take it. So it's very funny. All of us want to succeed, but how do I define success? So today's talk, I'll try to take you through and define and help you to take, define what are the six steps that I have learned through my journey by interacting with great minds, both in India and abroad, great teachers, great mentors, and what did I learn? What are the most key important six steps? And that would be my, so I'll take you to the first slide. Just give me a minute. So, <coughs> you can see the slides. So it is coming. Yes, yes, sir. It is now. I am sending it live, sir. It will, now it's visible? Yes. Okay. I have given this title, Power of Imagination and Knowledge, actually in a data-driven, data-deluge world, but all of you are more familiar with WhatsApp and Facebook. You realize that, you know, I, I started using my Facebook, Twitter, all the social media only in 2015. I suddenly realized during my director general's position, uh, I haven't used them. I wanted to, after I retired, I thought it would be nice media. I'm so glad that I do this today. Why I said this? Because all of you get lots of information in this. So we are actually living in a infodemic. While we have a pandemic, we also have an infodemic. And during this period, I must tell that this lockdown, I think the use of Facebook, WhatsApp, Twitter has gone several hundred times fast. I get more and more. What, what is happening? People are forwarding information. 
Now, you are living with information, enormous information. And as you go forward, in your, and you are thinking you are stuck, you're at your home, you can't do anything. You know, in my personal life, 1971 was a very dark year in West Bengal due to Noxalite movement. We had our universities were closed, colleges were closed, all high schools were closed. And our that time I was doing my BSc in chemistry honors, and to do so our exam was postponed by a year. So my certificate says 1971 exam held in 1972, and that's how my certificate writes. So what did we do during that period? I can tell you, I would have been a pure chemist, you know, when I hear uh, Dr. Mutkavi telling so many things, uh, I was thinking back that as a student, I was learning chemistry. I was going to the college, taking notes, preparing exams. But this one year, I read books. Not only I read books of chemistry, which was a chapter, but I also read books of autobiographies of scientists. And I started developing a science journal in Bengali. All sorts of things I could do that time because I did not have to go to college. And so this was a great time. Today you are having that great time. This is a great time to explore your own abilities. You have got into an admission into a college or university thinking this is what you want to do. There are peer pressures, there are parent pressures. But this time has given you an opportunity to believe and really discover yourself and your talent. So what do we learn from COVID-19 pandemic? Most happy I was as a biologist because I converted myself from a chemist to biophysicist. Uh, when I went to University of Science to do PhD, I had great master's teachers. And then went to University of Science to do molecular biophysics PhD. And then progressively I moved into biology to understand ourselves. So what I discovered, sudden public interest in biology shifted from space. You know, with Chandrajan and Mangalyan, there was a lot of interest in space. Everybody was interested in space. We all waited for the soft landing uh, of the on the moon, the rover, uh, at one o'clock night. The whole, whole country was away. Again today, I'll say, this pandemic has brought enormous interest in the country. Everyone overnight started learning virology, vaccines, clinical trial. I'm sure uh, Mutkavi has learned a lot of them. The computer scientists have gotten interested in diagnostics. People are doing epidemiology. You know, people want to know what is R0. That means the transmission, this virus has R0 3 compared to flu virus is 1.3. Immunology is my, do I have antibody? And then statistics and data analytics, including Ayurveda. Everybody was learning every possible thing. On the other hand, due to lockdown, lots of people learned how to do online shopping, banking, teaching, meeting, etc. You know, today I have never done online shopping. So now I do lots of online shopping. I learned it. I, I learned to use now Google uh, Meet, Zoom, and today I'm doing on what is called uh, Microsoft Teams. So, however, knowledge and expertise was in high demand. So I discovered that how much people were interested in learning what they did not know. And there was an explosion of learning, breaking the barriers of knowledge, uh, boundaries. You know, people are bounded. I'm a chemist, I'm a biologist, I'm a physicist. Everybody was trying to learn new things. You know, it has been difficult for me to learn how to use teams, but I learned it. So all sorts of new things were happening. And that's what the pandemic has taught us. So six, six steps 
to achieve success in science, technology, engineering, and medicine, the STEM. Your, your first question you will ask me, how do we define success? You know, some people say, I've got first class, first gold medal, I'm successful, I got a big job with a big pay packet, I'm successful, I'm the CEO of a company, I'm the director of NIST, I'm successful, my paper has appeared in Jack's Journal of Chemical Society, I'm successful, I have 5,000 citations, so I'm successful. It can be anything, people. I have created a company, a startup. I have sold it in a billion dollar valuation. I'm successful. To me, I have seen lots of people, even Nobel laureate, achieving success, but they're not happy. I've seen people who always aspire to reach the destination, not necessarily happy. But so it is the pleasure through the journey that's what brings happiness and not the destination. So what I'm trying to tell you today, how do you develop an ability to enjoy and, and have pleasure while you go through the journey and not worry about the destination? I can see many of the young scientists who aspire to get some recognitions. Many of you are aspiring to join to do PhD at the University of Science. Somebody is whispering to go to IIT. Somebody is going to go to Stanford, Berkeley. All are only destination. But if your journey is not enjoyable, then your destination is not important. It is the important is the journey towards the destination that brings you happiness. So the step one, interact with great teachers, knowledgeable people, and find good mentors. Why I'm saying this? Because I saw during this time, lots of people calling me to learn drug discovery, vaccine, understand how the virus travels, all sorts of science. And they were not scientists. They were successful businessmen, successful investors, successful marketeers, engineers, and all sorts of people. So in my personal life, it's very, very important to have great teachers. I was lucky. When I studied my chemistry, I had teachers like Asima Chatterjee, Sadhan Basu, Nihit Chaudhuri in Calcutta. I also shared the notes of Professor C.N.R. Rao, George, several IIT Kanpur teachers, and they were all extraordinary teachers. Then I came to Bangalore, and there I had G.N. Ramachandran, Shashi Shekharan, an extraordinary biophysicist who could think ahead of time, who could believe you can build things that others haven't conceived. Today, you might be sitting in a remote town in Northeast, but you have an access to this digital platform to great teachers and knowledgeable people. So my first advice is get connected to a large number of good, great teachers and knowledgeable people. And I can tell you, those who are of my age, as you are across 65 and 70, 70 plus, many, many people with a lot of knowledge and wisdom will be very happy to interact with young people. I can two 12 class students in a remote village of Bengal from a very poor family, but extremely interested in science. So this is very important. And I suggest to all my scientific leaders, those who are active and those who have moved out of their formal active life, get connected. Let them be connected to the people who are interested to learn. Then you have to be lucky to find a good mentor because mentor is an important component. And if you have not, so therefore, the I will say single search, whatever you want to do, find a good good mentor. Mentor is not teacher. Mentor who shapes you, who looks at you, decides what you are good at, who rebukes you, who hold hands, hold, holds hand of you and take you forward. Mentor 
You can be your, your elder brother, it can be your parents, it can be your teacher, it can be a family friend, it can be anybody or who you don't know at all. But it is very important. I have been very successful. I have been very lucky that I had great mentors. When I learned genomics, I had international mentors because in India there was nobody who knew genomics. I had Charles Cantor from USA and Andrew Mirzabekov from Russia, uh, who was the director of the Engelhardt Institute and later he was the academician and the secretary general of Soviet Academy of Sciences in late 80s. So mentors takes you to a new domain. Mentors shows you what others cannot show you and mentors gives you confidence about your abilities. So please look for great teachers and mentors. <laughs>
is the reason that different country has different death rate? Is India's death rate less? Is it the virus different? What is it? Now you have to answer this. You have to get into a very comprehensive understanding of the system. First, you have to understand: Are we doing enough diagnostics to find, or is the number of deaths are less, or because the healthcare system is fantastic, or it is because you have an innate immunity, or because you have broken the transmission, or because repeated exposure is avoided? or because you had other infections which has given an antibody in your body to create larger innate immunity whether it is this gene or anything else so people look at an elephant with looking at the trunk they think blind person looking at elephant you have know the story that you will look at the leg and say it's a pillar the trunk is a snake the ears are fan but to be honest you need to look at comprehensively and collect that data, then only you will understand that it is an elephant. So when you assimilate this knowledge and information, that actually gives you a position to have a wisdom, to see, oh, this could be the reason why things are happening. So I will suggest why you handle data, learn comprehensively, convert the information, and then it will get the knowledge by reading. You know, mm -hmm. as Albert Einstein said, imagination is more important than knowledge. I have just added the word to say to make innovations. Imagine, you have to imagine first before you can achieve it. Elon Musk imagined that he will send a space rocket where the rocket will be reusable. Rocket will come back and reland on a drone ship. Just imagine what an idea. And during this COVID time, he achieved it. You know, he demonstrated that it is possible. So therefore, imagination is very, very important. How, when is the time for imagination? It is the time when you don't see your WhatsApp, don't see your mobile phone, don't see anything. Sit and think. So I will say, as you know, by the famous uh, book, where 10,000 hours you spend, you spend 10,000 hours to become a good mathematician, 10,000 hours to become a good musician, 10,000 hours to become a great player like Sachin Tendulkar. So you need to spend 10,000 hours. So I, my idea is you need to spend 10,000 hours only thinking and imagining. And COVID time is a great time for you to spend isolation and think and develop the capability of thinking. So imagination is the next to success. While all of you are focused in improving your intelligent quotient or IQ is important, but I suggest to be successful in life, it is very important to improve your emotional quotient, EQ, SQ, the social quotient. And I've added one more to adversity quotient AQ. And I've seen during this Facebook, uh, during this pandemic, lots of people could not handle this adversity very easily. Many of you who are highly aspirant, who are preparing for IIT and exam, or those who are already in IITs and high pressure institution, I have seen many children uh, doing suicide, Many children go to depression, which I have interacted with them and I found it. They can't handle adversity. You know, I don't know if you have been always first class fast or fast or topper of the school, then suddenly you get a low rank or low marks, you get depressed. So one of the things I keep telling everybody that how, how hard you fall is not important. How fast you recover is important. Adversity coefficient is measures your ability how to handle adversity. Many of you, many of us have lost parents at early days. I'm sure Dr. Marshall Kerr must have told that he lost his parents when he was very, very young. Very adverse 
like many people have very low, very, very adverse financial situation. You have lived through many successes have happened when people knew how to fight adversity. So therefore, I will suggest that this is one of the most important steps that develop while IQ, develop emotional quotient, social quotient, and adversity quotient. Now, adversity increases innovation. Why I am saying this? Power of imagination and knowledge was amply demonstrated during the last few months, which I mentioned. I have seen STEM students coming out, all sorts of new ideas and professionals. Just imagine 120 days science from identification of the virus, deciphering the genome sequence of the virus, finding all the protein coding frames, expressing and characterizing the proteins, raising antibodies, development of diagnostics, you know, I'm very proud that CSIR system, the Institute of Genomics and Integrative Biology came out with a diagnostics feluda in a record time. I do not think in the history of Indian national laboratories that from the science to standardization to commercialization, a product has happened within 100 days. You know, that product today I know is being take, is taken by the Tata Sons and it is now, they have acquired a company and they are manufacturing it uh, <coughs> in Chennai. So it is this, the speed at which IIT has come up with diagnostics, my lab has come up with some diagnostics, the speed at which Indian pharma industries and institutional work together to develop vaccines which has gone to clinical trial. So this is unprecedented speed at which this has happened. Understanding the biological action of the virus, it might be so difficult to understand how this virus works. Every day we learn, and we learn it goes to a C2 receptor, what it does, how does it infect. So medical implications, treatment protocol, using repurposed drugs or therapeutics. For example, now, Sepsivac is used uh, for some therapeutic. It's under clinical trial phase, you know, to, because they approve things. So repurposed drugs, people are working on hackathons, open source drug discovery for, T for TB was what initiated by me. Now it is being on COVID. So many articles are written, so many data got implemented. Development of <coughs> novel apps in you know, Aragosin. You look at the tracker, tracer apps in Bangalore. I have seen a robot standing in front of Fortis laboratory, Fortis hospital, and to flu, flu uh, diagnostics. Uh, you know, the trolleys in a hundred year old hospital, I've seen moving robotically to the patients to deliver food and medicine. Engineers, biomedical devices got them. So extraordinary innovation has happened during this adversity. So adversity brings an opportunity, and I'm so glad that CSIR Director General, my as Dr. Shekhar Mande, I'm very proud that he took initiative to use this opportunity to create five pillars and move into all possible directions to use our Tremendous talent in the CSR system to utilize it. I'm glad that using the same adversity, I have not given address to 2,000, 3,000 students. Narahari Shastri has created this opportunity to address thousands of students. I'm just told it's more than 2,000 now. Uh, students are addressing, are listening to this talk. So therefore, my belief is the most important component of success is self-belief. As an organization, as a scientist, as an individual, 
how do you self believe it is the self belief as a nation that makes a difference we as a nation we have believed that we can cut the transmission of the virus is a nation we have believed that we can be ahead of the virus not behind and today we are ahead of the virus we are definitely definitely doing better than the mightiest country of the world therefore we have a reason to be proud and not to be critical and you all young people are the one who will make the difference so <clears throat> dr mashelka's word many time he says empathy compassion you know one thing i learned sympathy is all about thoughts you many of us had sympathy for the migrant workers empathy is thoughts and feelings you feel bad that this is happening you know so many people are poor they can't they can't find a livelihood you get angry that why so those people were not provided shelter food and by their employers and little bit of money for next three months why does our temples could not take care of their temporary workers our biggest temple did not take care whereas you see the compassion that gurudwaras of india has shown compassion is not only thought feeling but is action i am so proud across the world the gurudwaras have taken care of thousands and thousands of people it is what is called compassion covid 19 has taught us to be compassionate only sympathy and empathy do not serve the purpose so my request to you you will be successful when you when you develop a status of compassion i thank all of you for organizing and listening to this lecture i am happy to give this lecture and teach you six steps to become successful in life but i will be more happy if many of you try to implement what i taught and become a compassionate person success is within not outside success is not measured what others measures for you success is measured through your internal happiness that you have thank you very much i will take the question and questions so that i can answer them can you i can thank you. you can i get out of the slides can you yes yes i will do, I will do that. that so so thank you very thank much you very sir much, for sir, sir. the really inspiring talk and uh, starting to compare people who are born about 100 years or 1900 and uh, comparing them with uh, the, those who were born in 2000 and then ending up with this uh, sympathy and empathy and passion is uh, really very nice and uh, a large number of appreciations were there and i will be a bit selective and then i will also merge uh, a few questions and starting with your last point there is a question by sheikh nasreen and a few others that uh, students who don't have a good net connectivity but interested in gaining much of the knowledge and i will club another question by shreya a few others who says that how to overcome the uh, depression and emotional balance during this period okay <clears throat> let me say the first one you know i didn't want to publicize uh I I run a charitable trust called Sahajpat Online. org for Bengal students who do not have internet. So it is I call them Khan Academy for people who do not have internet. So it's a mobile phone, 2G based question answer. We students can call a number. You can note down the number one eight hundred eight nine zero six zero zero six. this is for students of schools up to class 10 and then there is another number in which you can call 11 and 12 where we were getting we have served this for last 3 years 
almost 10,000 students. You know, during the pandemic, this was in Bengali. I was asked by Haryana, that is Faridabad Education Council, can we have it in Hindi for the school students of Haryana? We launched on 25th April during the pandemic, made the servers compatible for Hindi. And today I can tell you thousands of students from Haryana are actually getting their help by calling teachers on this number and the teachers can speak to them in Hindi, English, whatever language you want. Yes, I am absolutely aware the country needs this and that's how it was created. I again tell you can go to the website Sahaj Part S A H A J P A T H online dot org. The second question is about depression. Why we get depressed? Because our aspiration is higher than our actual situation. And this is a great time when, when you know, we have no, I, I was thinking, you know, four months I have not gone out of the house. The last time I, first, Jan, first March, I gave a talk in the Deccan Dialogue in Pune and came back. And since then, I'm at home. <clears throat> you know, it's the first time I'm seeing in person anybody's face other than my family member is Dr. Devashis Das, who was first time come to my house in this many years, this many months. So therefore, I think connectivity is important, but you also have lots of time to do things that you never did before. Read books. Read lives. That's why I said, that's why I started with your 1900, you are born. Just imagine, you have to go through Spanish flu, you have to go through World War I for four years, then World War II, six years. Read the life of those Nobel laureates who has actually lived through, the great scientists. How did they do? They were in concentration camp. You know, I worked for a year in France uh, with a professor who, who and his wife were in concert, they were Jews. They were in concentration camp in Poland. But he was a professor at France. So adversity coefficient is the what that matters. How do you come out of adversity? And focus only on positive. I do not interact. I do not read WhatsApp. I switch off television when it is negative. I only look at positivity. And, and if you do only positive things, interact with positive people, have friends who talk positive. Don't delete WhatsApp if somebody gives you negative WhatsApp. Only stay in a connected society, in the social media, which is only positive. You know, I can see Dr. Alok Dhawan. I know how positive-minded he is. I know uh, other leaders, how positive-minded he is. You know, Narayani Shastri. I only have people they interact and I have them in my, my Facebook or social media who are positive. You know, I can tell you, I have been coming to Delhi. One of my greatest mentors was Dr. Mashelka. I have never seen him negative, even at this age, who is, you know, late 70s, beginning 80s. I'm sure he gave an address on 30th. It's a positivism. And positivism is the only way you can get out of depression. Next question. Okay, thank you very much, sir. So, in the meanwhile, we have uh, our young students have created a, a slide with your photograph and then the six steps to achieve success in science, technology, <laughs> and with the title that extraordinary tough times creates humans to do extraordinary new things. And uh, these are fantastic people that uh, Monty and Lisa and uh, with the guidance of the breath, they have done it. So, uh, Rupshar has a question that uh, the we, slide. Um, you see the slide, sir? Yeah, I can see, I can see. Okay. So, your uh, answer will also address the question of Rupshar who says that how to use imagination power for reducing depression. But now I have another question which asks, how to use, uh, uh, how to deal with the difficulties 
that link imagination to execution. And another question in the same line by Soumya says that a person with less communication skill, how can they express his imagination? Or I would say feel their imagination and uh, what is the role of this communication skills? That's the question. Yeah. You know, I have a, a granddaughter like child, one of my colleague's daughter. Uh, she is very imaginative. And she has an idea. She's very small, class, I think she's in class, class four or something. And whenever I go to their house, they shows me idea. And it's a very important component, as I said, that if you have an idea, write it down. You may not have the time today to implement because you are too young or you don't have the resources. I repeat, idea comes when your knowledge is high. More idea comes when you meet people with ideas. So you stand on the shoulder of giants to see things happen. Many of us read a paper, but we don't know how was that discovery was made. So when I was young, I used to ask Professor Shishikar, G.N. Ramachandran was already very old, Professor Shishikar was a student. So I used to ask him, tell me how was this discovery made? How did it come to your mind? So it's very important when you meet a scientist, read a paper, ask that question, how did you make this discovery? How did you come up with it? So if somebody asked me, how did you get the idea of open source of discovery? You know, today I, I'm very proud to say, that two things I should share on this point. One, that in mid 80s, when I was exposed to genomics, India was not. I dreamt of an institute that we should have, which will be able to do genomics when it arrives. So in 1997, 95, I was very frustrated. I was depressed because I was keen to do, but I didn't have resource to do. Although I had all the awards, recognitions that nation can give, I had me. I was already a member of Hugo from 19, 1990. So when I got an opportunity to come to Delhi, I decided at the University of Science, being a professor at the University of Science, when my wife was also a faculty there, we decided to leave because we wanted to chase the dream that I wanted to have an institute of genomics because I knew 2020 India will need genomics. Now that's a dream. And I personally feel when I see the Institute of Genomics and Integrative Biology delivering today is a referral center for diagnostics, referral center for analysis, referral center for genome sequencing. You know, it's a great pride. But I have not taken it to that point. I have taken it halfway. But, you know, somebody imagines, somebody dreams, somebody builds, somebody takes it forward. So everybody, you know, in, 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 Hindu mythology, we have Brahma, Vishnu, and Mahesha to take forward. In biology, uh, you know, transcription is initiated by a protein, elongation is done by another, and then termination is done by somebody else. So that's the way it is. So therefore, no reason to believe that all ideas and imagination of yours will be fulfilled, you only, people. Second example is open source drug discovery. Again, when I wanted to get people to develop drugs for TB after working extensively on TB genome, identifying 10 years the TB was, genome was available, but no new drug has come. So we worked on it. We got new targets. But when I went to the pharma companies, especially international pharma companies, who can put large money to discover drugs for TB, they said, no, this doesn't have business because drug discovery takes billions of dollars market is only $300 million. So I came back and thought, what can we do? If Linux can be open source, supercomputers are running 95% of them in Linux. The physicist, the galaxy, the star, the star, zoo star, all these projects are happening through young people participating on an open source media. Then why can't we drug discovery? Why should it be in the con you know in the closed door of the pharma companies? So that's how open source drug discovery started. It was nobody accepted in the beginning, and Nadu Shastri, you are a party to that. You have seen how it developed. Today, today, it was ahead of time, ten years ahead of time. 
And as it moves, the world has embraced. We have a now open source pharma foundation. We have global initiatives. And, <coughs> and then the WHO president has mentioned that we have to do open source. This is a very endorsement of the open source drug discovery. Indian IT Act 2016 incorporated. Intellectual Property Act incorporated Indian open source drug discovery, CSI as a model. WHO documentation has said that open source tools should be utilized for affordable drugs. <clears throat> Yesterday you have launched the hackathon. Hackathon is nothing but we used those days 8,700 students and scientists across 130 countries. So what you see, you don't close necessarily. You, you see it. You have an idea. And then idea takes time to get matured. And today I can tell we have a solidarity trials running, which is open source. There is repurposed drug open source activity happening. Uh, we have recently written an article. I can, it is in the, uh, I can share with you from 80 scientists from across the world, from Seattle to uh, Japan including, and I'm the only Indian there, to say how we need to develop affordable healthcare as an open source. So according to me, uh, that's the way it goes. You know, I should be happy. I, I could have been unhappy saying that, oh, open source drug discovery of CSIR is not moving forward in 19, 2014. But I'm happy that it has moved. So therefore, it's your internal happiness. So your job, it is you have to decide whether you are a Brahma or a Vishnu. You need Vishnus to take forward Brahma's ideas. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Actually, yesterday, this uh, drug discovery hackathon, Prime Minister's idea, and uh, everybody has been so much appreciative of your initiation. Thank so you. it takes time. And uh, good, and also your own uh, people whom you have molded, like me, Gita, and Anshu. And I am looking forward as a chairman of the Problem Statements Evaluation Committee. And we are expecting several thousands of the people working on this. Anshu is making this uh, tool room in uh, CDAC, and Gita is helping with our DG to go ahead. And CSR is fully geared up. And with the type of training that you have imparted to us with the OSDD, we will take it forward. And uh, IGIB, the dream that you have made, now it is probably arguably the best CSIR lab with high levels of international recognition. And I am very happy. And another thing, just I heard that Dr. Sangwan has joined. And uh, your another dream that CSIR has uh, be taking very, very good shape. And I would like to request Dr. Alok Dhawan, as you say, there's something. Thank you so much, Dr. Shastri. Uh, my compliments and greetings to you, Professor Brahmachari. I think a wonderful talk as always. Uh, you always ignite all of us uh, at any point in time. And the first time I remember meeting you in IGIB uh, on this SNP project, I still remember you gave us a new year greeting which says that, you know, uh, no risk, no gain or something like that. It was on the card and a, a guy is climbing up uh, the mountain. So I think the, the bigger risk you take, the bigger success. You... I think uh, on a positive note, sir, I'd also like to mention to the students who are attending here. Uh, I always say there's no failure. There is a uh, successful attempt and an unsuccessful attempt. So let's not talk about failures. Let's talk about unsuccessful attempts and how we can uh, put in more uh, of our effort to make it successful. And I think, and I think you very aptly said that the uh, you know EQs and AQs of of what people should actually be thinking. I think uh, we are very fortunate that we've been surrounded by people like Dr. Mashelkar and you who have always thought in the positive direction. And uh, positive is two negatives always make a positive like this. So I think mm -hmm. it's the way you look at things, the way you perceive things, the way you sort of uh, translate things in real life that matters. And if we have good mentors, like you rightly mentioned, uh, it only um, makes the process simpler and easier for us. I think the the sort of uh, the foundations that you've uh, made in uh, in terms of IGIB or in terms of ACSR are now seeing 
the fruits uh, uh, in terms of acsr i can definitely say sir that we are now in the world the biggest organization of the maximum number of phds that are currently uh, in science and technology so that only goes to show your vision uh, oh, those days uh, that we we actually took a small strides but and there was a lot of resistance but nonetheless we stood the stood the ground and now we are among the top uh, places in the world with uh, as many number of phds in in under one single umbrella and same is true for igi we i think it has shown the world how quickly they can transform science into technology for the benefit of humans uh, for the benefit of masses and you know the, the technology is out there it'll be it'll be uh, be used for common man very soon so i think uh, our salutations to you sir that you've guided us uh and i was fortunate to be guided both by you and by uh, dr mashelkar during my time as a scientist so i think i was very blessed in those sense that we had uh, a double positive charge uh, if if i may say so on us so it was fantastic I, to hear you again i want to tell only one thing you know there is a story of salmon sabar who carries the stone at the top of the hill so the question is answer whether is he happy because he is throwing every time the stone is rolling down every time stone is rolling down so if his objective is to reach the top of the mountain then he is perpetually unhappy but if he is enjoys the journey of carrying the stone to the mountain then he is all the time happy yeah so i have practiced my profession and i practice my life as a journey yeah. and enjoy the journey so my request to all young people learn to enjoy the journey learn to learn not to see what exactly the target the target will arrive there is nothing that you can do you know if you worship uh, saraswati lakshmi follows but if you worship lakshmi lakshmi evades you so therefore it is very important that worship the goddess of knowledge and once you worship i think everything will fall absolutely but why i am saying this during this pandemic i have not only addressed scientists professionals families so many people wanted to know about this and so i had to learn and read every day i was connected to the harvard then we were working together from across to create solidarity trials how to bring vaccine together which is the likelihood but i will be surprised i also address hundreds of uh, investors who want to invest in when the market went down so i was surprised that how knowledge becomes valuable and eventually it brings you lakshmi so therefore i will always suggest uh, that pursue knowledge eventually lakshmi will follow absolutely very well said sir Uh, we also have professor vm tiwari director of ngri oh he is also online dr tiwari would you like to say something here uh, i i we namaskar sir namaskar sir uh, we just only like to uh, thank you that uh, you could uh, really ignite not uh, the younger generation but even to the older generations so <laughs> So, so thanks a lot, sir. Uh, uh, nothing more. I'll salvage a pleasure and uh, uh, <coughs> meeting you and listening you, sir. All of you are younger than me, so nothing to worry. All of you are young. Thank you, sir. Is Doctor Sangma still online? क्वेश्चन
question in the students who belong to IITs or such an institute, those who don't have such reputation. I didn't get it again. What do you say? Why there is a? Yeah, yeah. Today you don't have to be, you know, I, I tell this story to everybody. If you were born <coughs> a thousand years back, you should have been in Babylon. <coughs> you should have been in Padua. Because that's where the science was. If you were born 400 years back, then you should have been in England, Oxford, you know, Isaac Newton is around, you should have been there in Europe. You would have been born in 100 years back, then you should have been in <coughs> Germany, France, where the great physics was happening. If you were to be in science in 70s, you should have been in the United States, California, Stanford, Berkeley, MIT. In 2000, I tell this from 2000 onwards when internet came. You have to be only in Google Scholar. So if you have to be, you know, today, you have to be in cyberspace. It is unimportant where you are. You can reach anybody and everybody in the world if you can be in the cyberspace. So for young Indians, with cheap data, with geo reach, you can be anywhere. You can watch today the Loop Museum online. You don't want to Paris, travel to Paris. You can study Coursera from MIT, professor's lectures. It is only you who has to decide where you want to be. So therefore, I think craze to go to IIT is not an appropriate approach. It doesn't matter. How does it matter? Go back and ask Professor CNR Rao, I'm sure if uh, Narayani Shastri will be able to convince you to give a talk. Uh, he was went to a village school, in you know, a very small school. Today, nobody in Bangalore would like to go there to the school. Great teachers, you know, I was telling, I went to Bengal, Taki, the school which has produced Vice Chancellor of JNU, government school, the chairman of the Atomic Energy, National College. You go, Bangalore. Who are the people who have studied there? So many Bharat Ratna, Padma Bhushan, you know, the schools. It's amazing that those government schools produced. So it's unimportant which school, which college you go. It is absolutely unimportant. Today, you are in cyberspace. So therefore, we, we have no reason. It is all, you know, it's all public peer pressure parental pressure, people don't know actually, you don't need to. You can be anywhere to create, get knowledge. I can tell you, the, the kids I work, interact with on the rural Bengal, they are much smarter than many kids of the very big schools and top schools of Delhi. But they don't have access to many things. So we have to, our job as academicians, of the national academies, and institution like CSIR to make sure that the science reporter like journals reaches them free. And that's what I think uh, is very important. Thank you very much. Sir. We have a very senior scientist, probably you know Dr. B.G. Unni, who retired mm -hmm. a few years ago and then he went as a dean of a university. And he has so much appreciation, three, four tweets he has made. And then he also had a question that a lot of research activities are going on to fight against COVID-19 and production of vaccine at many laboratories within our country and outside. On this context, what is your opinion about basic research over applied research? Uh, you know, I gave a recently uh, a talk which I mentioned that to me, there is no difference between basic research, applied research, translational research. Uh, science is seamless. You know, what was basic yesterday is applied today. Uh, I repeat, uh, if, you, if you ask fundamental discoveries of uh, yesterday years, is what is allowing today for us to understand the application. Basic immunology, cell biology look to be very esoteric, 
But without those immunology and cell biology, we would not have been there to go for the vaccines. So there is no, absolute no barrier. And you yourself said that one of the CSR, one of the CSR best institute, not, I will never say best because never in Japan, you never call you have done best because then you will stop improving. So I will say IGIB as a one of the best institute, still not the best, and has to, it is where the science and application has seamlessly marched. And that's what you said. So I can tell you, good science is always leads to a good application. If not the same person, maybe somebody else. So therefore, I my, my suggestion to the senior scientists that our elderly scientists very often divided, our academies divided. Uh, CSIR also sometimes gave awards and functions saying it is applied, it is basic. My request is good science is what leads to good application. We need both. And uh, just like in one day cricket, you need different scoring rates. Uh, you have value for people who come for 11 balls and crosses 32 runs and save somebody who faces from the beginning uh, like Rohit Sharma. So you need both. And an institution is built great if it has a combination of both. Yes, you can have all-rounders who takes an idea and implements into the finish, you know, but they're, they're small numbers. You know, I, I take biggest pride now during post-retirement is my uh, teacher on call program of the Shahaj part, which is using the same principle of crowdsourcing of OSDD. We crowdsource housewives and teachers who are retired and retired professionals and the students can then or through a cloud telephony through a very complex algorithm we distribute students and the students get connected to the teachers. I'm very glad to say Geo has given this toll-free number. So if any of you have uh, no underprivileged children who needs education in Bengal or in Hindi, uh, English also possible, please dial 1-800-890-6000. You will get to know and you can go to the website www.sahajpath.org thank you very much sir we will also put it in the our uh, srtp website the number one eight zero zero that that number sir uh, there are many people who are asking a question and uh, including anisha that uh, why there are so less Nobel Prizes in our country uh, compared to China and Japan or other countries? Oh, this needs a full lecture. <laughs> I have a full lecture on it. You know, if you look at Indian science, uh, we had a very traditional knowledge-based science, which is Ayurveda. We had a very, in healthcare, we had extraordinary metallurgists who could build uh, Kutub Mina. It doesn't get rusted. We had great architect who could build Taj Mahal, which still stands and being one of the wonder. So we had every possible capability. We made Jantar Mantar. We had astrophysics. We are understanding of astronomy. But then we came under colonial rule. And colonial rules, 1835 speech of McLeod in British Parliament was that how do we subjugate India, Indians, if we do not break their education system? So British realized that with the Indian strong education system and learning method and skills, we have to subjugate them. So that is how colonial world we started getting Western education. 1800. If you look at 1800N, I have a paper article in uh, Current Science, uh, two, three years back I published. You will see chronologically the institution they were built, Geological Survey of India, Botanical Survey of India. All this was built to help British to map Indian resources and to take it to the Western world 
and bring it back after industrial revolution to India as a customer. So our, our science and abilities got into British method and then, then British built Calcutta University where I was graduated only to create uh, work for the British, the clerks. And then and in the revolution of that, Jadapur University was created with the opposite, saying that, no, we want to create a more liberal uh, science. British never built a science institute in India. The first science institute was built in 1907. Actually, it was the J J Jamshedji Narasinghi Tata with the advice of Sri Vivekananda while his journey to Europe, Chicago, was advised to build an institute of science. So Tata gave one third of his wealth to unborn institute of science. So, but Tata could not see this, he died. It is only after his death, finally 1908, India Institute of Science was born first to do science for the people of India. So our science is absolutely at infancy. Okay, you just imagine Europe science. So American science is not by nothing but extension of Europe science. This is 500 years old. We are only 100 years old science. So that was only one institution. Then, then came Bose Institute, J.C. Bose, who started his own institute. Then came Cultivation of Science, where C.V. Raman worked while he was a clerk. <clears throat> but when C.V. Raman got Nobel Prize, he got the award, the flag went up as a union jack. He was very upset. He cried. He thought he's proud Indian with his pagri, but the flag was British. Then Satyan goes, Meghnath Saha, great physics. So then, independence, just before independence, uh, CSIR, it was born only to get British war effort. 10 lakh rupees was given. In 1947, really, Indian science started with converting Board of Scientific and Industrial Research into Council of Scientific and Industrial Research. Then our IITs came. So you can see, our science in India is not even 70 years old. Why I'm saying this, for young people, very often this question of Nobel Prize comes, you know, very, very many times I face this. Our first country did not have food. Country needed self-sufficiency. So we had to build from Saraj tractor to pesticide to make it full sufficient. So everything was substitution. The drugs pharmaceutical, in 1970, to chloromycetin for typhoid was so expensive that Indians can't afford it. I still remember my elder sister when he had typhoid. We had to do only ice because it is so expensive. You know, it will take away a salary of a month's salary if you have to treat with it. So then came the Patent Law Act. Change. So policy intervention of Mrs. Gandhi, which allowed process patent. CSIR came forward. National laboratories already were there. And they built, and today we are the pharmacy of the world. We are saving the world with pharmacy, right? Even the greatest country wanted, you know, chlor uh, hydroxychloroquine from India. Okay, whether it works or not is a secondary issue. So therefore, you can see how fast we are produced. So we were a import substitution country. Till 90, we were a closed economy. We had to build our own computer. Today, NAL has an imported computer, but the flow solver was developed at NAL to do the simulation. So India has to do this. So therefore, good basic science. Yes, J. N. Ramachandran, according to me, a Nobel laureate, Nobel Prize winning work. But it's Indian flag. It took time. You know, I can tell 20 times that India has produced during this period at least three or four scientists who deserve, I don't want to name them, I can name G.N. Ramachandran because he's no longer there, who deserve to be in that podium with a national flag flying. But number is still small. So it is only Narayani Shastri, is your generation. But then unfortunately in the 90s, when the IT came, because of economy, our best talented students moved into IT. So we created a gap. 
Then the ISARs came. The very talented students are working in ISAR. So my request to all the leaders of today, bring back these young kids from ISARs back. You know, Gavin Sorup was brought back by Hobi Baba. And that's why you have the world's, one of the largest radio telescope. There is a book which is coming, written by P. Hari on Indian science. And if you read, I'm sure all young people will be proud. For us, it was important to have a space program because we wanted to make sure that we have satellite images, whether the enemy is moving or our crops are being formed. The education that you are doing today is using our insect television. So you can see focus of the nation was not to go towards investing in Nobel Prize, but to make life better. We have become self-sufficient in food. We are the second largest producer of milk. We, are, we give the cheapest data to the world. We have a satellite communication system. We have the world's pharmacy. So what you want? According to me, Nobel Prize is an insignificant component of the whole. Still, I will say, I can quote four science discoveries, which is potential to get Nobel Prize. Of course, Dr. Amartya Sen got Nobel Prize for the work he did in India. The uh, Abhijit Banerjee got Nobel Prize for the work he carried out in UP. Uh, so, you know, it's, it's as India develops, as society develops, as economy develops, things will change. China's, no, China's Nobel Prize came very recently, but China developed its economy and skill much before. So it's very, very important that we need to create Self Atta Nirvar Bharat, which Mashilkar has talked about, and then a strong science based led application. Please remember elements of periodic tables, discoveries, gives Nobel Prize. But each of the periodic tables, when gets elements, gets into converted into products, that fetches wealth. So, conversion of wealth from the knowledge is the primary requisite for this nation now. We are very poor nation. We have to make sure we follow the SDG, Sustainable Development Goal 2030. We make a disease-free India, hungry-free India, and that should be our higher priority than only getting a Nobel Prize. Sir, thank you very much for your wonderful answer. And actually, the message that you have said that we have to be more interested in the journey rather than the destiny summarizes the quest that we as a society should be looking at larger pictures and how to become a knowledge society, how to become a society where knowledge is respected and we generate knowledge. And I would say that it is a question of 5,000 years of wisdom and 100 years of knowledge and our 100 years of new science that we are talking about. But COVID and the conflicts should make us a lot more resolved to bring forth our best. And as a nation, we are second to none when we realize our strength. Our strength is our knowledge. Our strength is our democracy. Our strength is our ability to innovate and to work with a good focus like Vasudhaika Kutumbam, because this is one nation which is looking at the welfare of the world. And I feel that uh, there are so many questions. And uh, I will ask one last question from uh, the students. Uh, if I may yes. say, Shastri, uh, Dr. Sangwan is actually there. He has to be included as a presenter, so he can actually join. He's included as a presenter. He is a presenter, but he is included from a different thing. I was trying to do this. Our team is working on it. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Just uh, two minutes because we are very much interested to see Dr. Sangwan, the director of ACSIR, speak a few words about ACSIR, which is your brain sir. Sure. So before that, among so many questions, plethora of questions, I will ask this question that I like. That when people give more importance to Mars rather than talent, how do we face that situation? That I am very talented but got less Mars or maybe <laughs> failed in an exam 
and uh, what is the situation currently? Yeah, you know, yes, some amount of marks will be required to get to the next step. If you are in class 12 to get an admission, yes. Sometimes it surprises me that people has to get 98, 99% marks to join St. Stephen's. But I ask a simple question. Does all those people join St. Stephen's become very brilliant? Are there people who did who got 75% marks? So I did a small experiment in Bangalore with Jain University. So the experiment was very simple. Uh, <clears throat> I asked a set of students to go and find out uh, how many people who are very successful and measured through a materialistic success uh, has what got marks. So they did a very interesting experiment. These are students. Students are uh, Jain University. They went and to a parking lot of a big mall, a couple of malls, and collected data as people came out of expensive cars. So they made sure that the cars are owned by them. And uh, if not, if their parents are old, then they got the number. What are the profession? What is the marks you got in your 12th class? What did you university study? Everything. Okay. And when that data was analyzed, the most interesting part was 25% of them never went to an university. Okay. Right. And of course, I was very lucky to see one in that data was a PhD. Okay. And uh, it just turns out the most of the people who had very, very bandwidth between was 70 to 90% marks, 85% marks. There were hardly any. So there are two conclusions possible that 95 plus are not in India or they are not driving expensive car. So it is your choice or, you know, it's a statistical data. So what we meant is if you look at success of individuals and go back and ask what did they do? That's why I started with concentration camp, uh, the professor. You will discover that many, many of them, great scientists, great successful people, have really come from very uh, humble beginning or not a great uh, examination. Yes, in India we have a problem. Uh, I have used this uh, information, which I can make it public. I'm a little afraid that it goes to the Facebook. <laughs> that you know, I never made a first class. I always short of three marks less than the first class. It was the mercy of CSIR who allowed me to use the fellowship to join G. N. Ramachandran's laboratory in a project given by CSIR at the Institute of Science. Uh, I always thanked, you know, when the uh, Institute of Science 2008 gave me the uh, best alumni award of the centenary function, uh, I wrote an article and said I thanked that CSIR clerk who could overrule that three marks shortage. And, uh, you know, I read books during, I never read chapters or notes. And the fact that I'm sitting here today and talking to you because I read those books. So my success, my, I all tell people eventually marks. Yes, it's important to get a next admission. But if you got next admission with marks, but don't have the knowledge, it is not going to take you far. So finally, if you have already got to a college, just learn, read books, learn. When your knowledge is larger than everybody else, you may not be the first in the class, but you are first in life. It is finally knowledge. Nothing else matters. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Tiwariji, you have some question? You have to unmute Tiwariji. Hello. Yeah. Uh, you can speak. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I just wanted to. Uh, I, I got reminded of uh, an instance uh, when uh, our beloved Professor Brahmchari, then DG, uh, was uh, narrating to uh, Professor Biswas, then uh, director of ACSAR, uh, likely to be director of ACSAR because ACSAR was in process, and I remember and uh, not exactly the same word what he uh, said that time, but he said that ACSAR should be an institution where even the high school pass having a merit can be enrolled directly to PhD. And I really uh, still remember that kind of vision he had. 
And the same thing right now, he has proven uh, with data that see, uh, even the people, those who are having less marks, can be as much having rewarding uh, life than anybody who would have got uh, more than uh, the uh, them. So, uh, so sir, it's uh, always uh, listening uh, new data, new ideas, and also uh, some kind of the inspirational words like uh, taking the students to the uh, best of their uh, fantasies word, uh, particularly in the science. Uh, my, uh, my request, uh, in, in fact, which I have been always uh, saying to you that as much lecture as possible, if uh, we can listen from you, uh, it would be really rewarding uh, for uh, not as a, only as a researcher, but as a human being, as a, also as a national, uh, uh, you can say, uh, people, those who are much more now feeling nationalistic uh, when they are being told that, yes, the Atmanirbhar Bharat is important. And how, why Atmanirbhar Bharat uh, is one of your one-liner, which you used to say during 12th flight, uh, five-year plan, that you give only one-liner of your project. And this one liner is that if we are uh, uh, Atmanirbhar, we have all potential that we can fetch uh, the uh, prizes, Nobel prizes. So, sir, uh, I only have to thank uh, again and again, and always get reminded of your previous talks when you speak uh, on uh, questions to the young minds, uh, those who are which, uh, which is similar to the questions which we had earlier to you. Thank you. Thank you. Now I know no, how Google Teams, the sub -teams, sub -teams Google, Google Meet, so I can always uh, come on. And now you will have a Geo Meet available soon. So therefore, I'm happy. I'll be very happy to address uh, anybody who, you know, uh, uh, I have been, uh, I have been communicating to uh, 10,000 students of school students of class 5 to class 10 in Bengal. And uh, many of them in the last three years have passed out, have gone out. We have run analytics to see who are the smartest one. We have identified few smart people and they are now in 12th class. My dream is to identify those rural talent and place them with some of you to uh, mentor as a, those who are aspired to be a scientist. And that's why I am running this program. Now it has program has started running in Haryana and I got a request from UP. So I am very happy to take it to UP because now it's in Hindi and uh, we plan to take it to Kashmir. We have got a request from Kashmir. So it's, it's now going to all India. Basically it is an online talent search from underprivileged children who do not have an internet access but only have a phone, you know, a small 2G phone to call. So this, but all is in the cloud. All data can be analyzed. You can figure out which student is asking intelligent questions. And sitting at my home, I can hear on the cloud all the questions the students are asking. So my, I have a team in Calcutta who sends me the most important uh, voice conversation. So that I say, oh, this is a bright guy. He's asking such questions, okay? The teacher may not be able to answer it. So that's, that's interesting. This is my new uh, passion uh, after retirement. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. So there are a stream of questions. But okay. We were awaiting Dr. Sangwan to join. Some of the questions, sir, we will answer and then we will send you because it's not possible to answer all the questions. They are like, how to keep a perpetual motion throughout? Aditi has this question. Or how to control emotions to get success? Or what is the role of compassion in understanding the gravity of COVID? So can you suggest any book to control emotions and become a compassionate person? <laughs> According to you, which is a better option? to do PhD in India and abroad, how to take. So there are a stream of fantastic questions and yeah. I don't want you to give. You may have to talk for another 20 hours at least. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so one we, thing I can tell, emotion 
is very personal. You know, I'm a very emotional person. Whereas uh, my wife, Dr. Vani, Dr. Vani from Cherry, she she can teach me how to control emotion and express. And so each individual is different. Uh, I don't think there is any formula that this only happens, this and that only happens. As I said, there is no formula for success. There is no magic wand by which you can make Harry Potter whatever you want. Uh, but I can tell you, if you love something and love deeply, and when you love that with passion, with interest and full energy and heart, you will acquire knowledge. And that knowledge is invaluable. And that takes you a long, long journey. Uh, I have seen kids. I can tell one of my granddaughter, like academic granddaughter, she very confidently talks. She's only six or seven years old. And she says, you know, you have to be different. I am different, you know, very confident. So, you know, there are kids who are Tara Jamidba. So, it's, it, you have to find them. And as a leader of science, many of you, is to find those kids. And they are the future uh, potential extraordinary innovators of the world. Thank you, sir. Before I can ask Dr. Alok Dhawan to take forward, um, can I request uh, Devashish Das to say one, or one minute, Devashish, for all the things that you have done for the last about uh, yourself as a, he's probably one of the topmost scientists of the country, molded by Professor Brahmachari, just like he molded me and many others. And uh, it will be always uh, good to listen to Devashish. Devashish, please. Uh, thank you, Maharaj Shastri. Uh, I'm not no talk or whatever, but I always enjoyed working uh, with Professor Brahmachari, uh, enjoyed uh, doing science at IGIV. So, all I can tell is the students are listening to me. I'm from Bhubaneswar, uh, passed out from a government school. And I never knew that I'll be a scientist in future. Uh, but when I came to Delhi, uh, first in Delhi University, then joined CBT, Center for Biochemical Technology, which is now IGIV. Then I knew that the work itself gives me the pleasure and the return of my time in investment. And that is where probably I transformed. Uh, and that is the point of change in my career. So all I would like to request the youngsters that whenever you are working in any field of your choice, just see that if you are getting uh, bored or you are just uh, tirelessly working. And I have seen this from Dr. Brahmachari and many other leaders whom I have seen, they simply do not get tired when they work on something which they love. So that is the only measure that whether you are pursuing the right career or not, just enjoy the work, the profession that you are getting into. And thank you. I can tell you, uh, Dr. Debas is came uh, with a chemistry, physical chemistry PhD from Delhi University with, with very small publication. And I was dreaming to establish the largest supercomputer of India in a biology environment. At that time, there were sanctions, so it was difficult for NAL or IIT, IIC to get it. And I gave the job to Devashish. Everybody was shocked that uh, how come without a computational degree, without a computer experience, he had only a six months of uh, subcomputer learning experience, that he can manage the largest uh, computer data center uh, of the supercomputer. At that time, our supercomputer was 4.7 teraflop, the top 500 of the world. But he did it. So it's, it's a love. You don't need, anybody can learn anything. Background is unimportant. What qualification you have is unimportant. What is important is your passion to do things that you love doing. So I always say, do what you love and love what you do. If you follow this, you are all true. Yesterday I was frustrated when I was not able to connect him. I was not loving. But today I am 
absolutely in love because I am able to talk to all of you and see all of many of you uh, because I can talk it through the things. So it's it's actually uh, do what you love and love what you do. That's all I want to say. So thank you very much, sir. With your permission, I will say one or two things. Actually, we I and Jabashish were involved in writing Genesis project in Chandigarh Imtech. And every day we have to work till three o'clock for Devashish and just to catch up next day morning. And uh, when Sir was the director general, all the directors they can get a phone call at twelve o'clock in the night or four five o'clock in the morning. It's but on the still Facebook. He has... Don't tell all this. It's on the Facebook. Don't tell all this. <laughs> but uh, now you have completed seventy years. I know that. <laughs> So this is something, but all this busyness, whenever a student want to meet him, he always find time. And many times he used to say that, okay, you come at six o'clock or we can go for a walk. And this is really, really inspiring to work with him. Now I will request uh, without uh, telling something which I should not tell on the public media. I request uh, Professor Alok Dhawan to go ahead and uh, wrap up. Unfortunately, we are not able to connect Dr. Sangwan, but Sangwan is very much uh, uh, lead, doing a very good job in ACSIR and he is thankful to you. Professor Alok Dhawan, it's all to you to wrap up. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you, Dr. Shastri. Oh, I think, uh, yes. oh Dr. Sangwan is oh. come. There you are. Oh, okay. <laughs> all swell and swell. Finally, Sangwan ji. Uh, Please unmute hear. yourself. Please unmute yourself. Yeah. Yeah, I can, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, I can hear you, Sangwan. Nice to see you. Okay. okay. Thank you, sir. Uh, uh, dear uh, students, it's a, a pleasure to join you on this very special day when Professor Brahmachari has given a lecture. You see, when Adversities come, what we do, we think about ourselves. Very, it's a very few people who think much beyond. And very few organizations also which think beyond. CSIR has been cultured this way in all times to think for the nation. CSIR leaders have been cultured this way that think about the nation. In this situation, when the whole country and the whole world is facing COVID-19 pandemic, our Professor Sastri, he has think, thought beyond, we were thinking all about it. And he had a partner. His partners, Dr. Dhawan, Dr. Tiwari. And you know, when we think about, uh, I don't watch much of the movies, but only movie I saw many times I've seen and I now also like is Sole. Sole, not because of whatever is in the story, but you have the team, Amitabh Bachchan and Dharmendra. It's the team that works. And that's how you have the team here. So Amitabh Bachchan is Dr. Sastri, and you have two Dharmendras along with that we are there with us. And the this learning comes, we have much senior Amitabh Bachchan and Dharmendra in CSIR is Professor Maselkar and Professor Baramchari. It's very rare when leaders one work in that spirit and things happen. In this situation, this CSIR summer research trainees program of this scale has been given. It was a great challenge when we were all concerned about our daily livelihood in a confined environment. These people organized this event with the partnership of Hope CSIR and it is the magnanimity of the, our leaders that Professor Brahmachari, who is Academy Professor of ACSIR, he delivered a lecture and once I was listening to the lecture, I, I just felt that I am still working in CSIR 
laboratory and, and listening to my director general. He is the person. There are only few people who everybody actually everybody has a professional life and a professional phase. Very few people who actually transcend those phases and continue continue their their growing affinity with the profession. Professor Brahmachari is one who has that. And when we listen to him, I, I am I'm sure all of you will realize there are very few people when you listen to the, those people and then you think, I should have listened to him earlier. You will also think that when can I listen to him again? And this is not somebody says you have a feeling in this way. And this is the, this is the first thing that thoughts are cultivated in you to think about the subject on which he spoke, the science and technology, how science and technology has grown in this country, how our, our scientists across generations has worked, have worked for this, and how we prioritize the nation building from the scientific intervention as a priority than winning a Nobel Prize. And these are the realities which come out of the heart Hello, am I audible? Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. you're audible. So it's a yes, great yes. pleasure. He is an institution builder. We only share that only share is that he is a biochemist. I'm also a biochemist, but he is a biochemist who just established institutions, made the biochemistry grow bigger than its own. Biochemistry happens to be first interdisciplinary science in the world. And he is the one who contributes how it, it can grow oh. further. To remain to maintain that when many interdisciplinary subjects came in, he established one institution earlier which was merely meant for supplying some biochemicals into an institution of eminence. Second institution is built up is Academy of Scientific and Innovative Research, that is ACSIR, an institution of national importance. And building these things, one feels many, many odds. And when you create, I must say, then odds for the current environment when you want to change the odds are on no challenges are not only building it how to make people believe that it will happen and how to make people that it makes a sense this is the way he established this acsir and the acsir today has 5000 students on roles as doing phd it has many many meanings in this country, we are we we have hundred more than hundred thirty crore people. A scale matters, and a scale and matter a scale with quality is Sonam Suaga. The quality is CSIR. The mentorship, the research facilities of the world class, and the scale is how many how much human resource a a a, a actually whole talented battalion of young researchers can be created out of it that will actually fuel the, the growth of science and technology in, the, in this country in next generations. I am very happy that he agreed to give a, give a lecture, a, a very nice lecture. Hope you should have continued to uh, listen to him. I also say in our own system that who in when there is a child, father never listens to the child because father believes child is a child and what say is not important today. What is important today is he is busy in the worldly things. So the son she feels ignored. But when his grandfather is there, it is a common observation the grandfather likes the grandson. And the grandson likes the grandfather because they listen to each other. They have a patience and they are sensitive to listen to it. We sometimes just make it more simplified that the heart of a child is same as the heart of a senior person or a dada. Dada or bache ka heart dil ek jasa hota hai. It is not the heart. It is it is the the responsibility to teach in Vanas Ashram 
to the generation which doesn't listen to the generation that listens this is a this is how and there are many very few people actually this then this in this spirit they consider the whole generation as their grandsons and granddaughters this is the magnanimity of professor brahmachari that he spares time whenever possible and gives his message gives his teachings advices motivates the our young generation motivates us to do best and to do what is needed in the times that are before us not in the times that have gone for or to what think of the times that are coming for us and this is a great this is the greatest message he gives i had the opportunity to work as a scientist in csir i also noticed that he doesn't go by what is told to him he has his own observation that he, he listens and he makes an, a study beyond this listening environment and draws his conclusion and one time he told me he just makes his own notes after the discussions which are not the part what was discussed but what you observed outside i am really thankful to him that uh, he spared his valuable time and gave an uh, invaluable advice to our young generations i will remain indebted to him he is our uh, academy professor which is a lifetime title for this organization and we are proud of him we are proud of his creativity we are proud of his, his guidance and we are proud of the love he has for his people in csir for his people in csir and the whole generations of the scientists one from one to all thank you very much thank i you. appreciate your efforts of the team thank you dr sanwan thank you for taking as i said csir was a dream we built it but you have taken it forward successively both of you and with dr chandrashekhar thank you thank you for uh, make the dream true thank you thank you very much thank you so much dr sangwan for these uh, excellent words i think it, it just epitomizes what professor brahmachari has been all his life and what he's done for this country i think sir we just uh, pondering that uh, csir can also be named as citadel of scientists for innovative research that's yeah, I, I, CSIR, <laughs> and that's precisely what it is and uh, as one of my mentors uh, sir used to say that every day i feel i was dumb yesterday and today it has proven without a doubt that uh, you know what we learned from you uh, we've definitely been wiser today um, as it was yesterday and i think it it only epitomizes also the curiosity and the learning attitude that one should have throughout his lifetime and and it should not diminish as we grow older it should uh, rather be much more as we grow older uh, to learn what is the new uh, sort of new normal or the new uh, technologies and i and i see and feel very happy that people like you and dr masherkar have adopted this uh, new technology with open arms and you're always present uh, either on twitter or on facebook uh, you know both of you are so uh, available on those platforms i think today you might have at least uh, uh, sort of addressed three to four generation of scientists and they would have got inspired and not only that you also have created a mechanism to uh, to sort of create more new scientists through the acsr platform and that is it totally totally in line with what our honorable prime minister is saying about atmanirbhar bharat with atma atma vishwas as professor mashelkar says so you have inculcated a lot of confidence today in our students the way you address them the way you answer their questions and i'm sure these are the students who will one day be sitting together and discussing uh, about how to take india forward and they'll be reminiscing uh, because of this technology this will uh, this will be available uh, on youtube and facebook so they can reminisce and reminisce as to what you said in those days and and how it is coming true in maybe 5 years from now 10 years from now maybe even earlier so i think uh, we profusely thank you sir for taking out your valuable time uh, uh, from your family and from your home and and sharing your experiences and thoughts with the uh, all the students and the scientists all the directors we every day we learn new things from you and uh, we must profusely thank of course uh, dr shastri uh, for organizing this uh, wonderful wonderful uh, sort of uh, 
summer training program, as I say, summer training, but from an air-conditioned room, I think is even better. Uh, but nonetheless, I think uh, students are able to see uh, various institutions. I think, sir, how we have planned it is that, that they will also be able to see a very high-end equipment through video cameras and, and be able to uh, see them uh, work. So I think it's a very unique uh, thing, again, unique initiative taken by CSIR and perhaps one of, of the kind in the world that we are, we are actually mentoring 15 to 16,000 students at a go. So from, um, from the bottom of my heart and from CSIR uh, family, we thank you profusely, sir, once again for your valuable time and your guidance and your motivational speech today. Thank you very much indeed, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, uh, thank you so much, Professor Bhavan. That's all for today's session. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Is present? Yeah, I will close that.